we go. Start of the creek mission. This is the last time that I'm gonna be able to actually do this. So I hope you all enjoy this adventure. This is gonna be really special for me. I just left my house and I'm gonna be walking for over three hours up this creek system, staying up here for 24 hours, living off the land, catching my own food, building my own shelter, sleeping up there overnight, and seeing what animals we can find along the way. Absolutely pouring down at the moment. Oh, everything's getting soaked. Now, I've lived on this creek system for about 10 years now, and we're actually moving houses. So this is gonna be the last time I'm gonna be able to do this. This is where I started my channel. This is where my love for nature really began to grow. So I feel really blessed that I've been able to not only experience it myself, but bring all of you guys along for the adventure for the past six years or so that I've been actually filming videos. I no joke remember swimming in this exact pool when I was literally this tall, so. It's so awesome that I can come up here for one final time walking up from my house. And then yeah, we're onto something new after that. But I say what we do right now, start heading up the creek. We got a massive hike ahead of us. So I'm just gonna keep walking up here, see if I can find anything, maybe find something to eat on the way up there. And yeah, take it all in for one last adventure. So I've been walking up this creek for about two hours now. We're about an hour away from that massive waterfall that we're aiming to get to. All the scenery up here is just so magical. Massive creeks snaking through the Australian rainforest, literally nothing better. The fact that I can confidently drink out of this creek says something to how clean this water is. But yeah, we gotta get up that waterfall now. Back to square one. <laughs> well, we made it. That was way harder than it needed to be. It's so slippery. Bunny nut. That one looks a bit old. Maybe these would be alright. This is an edible species of fruit that come off this massive tree and literally the size of bowling balls. Let me try to get some stuff off of it. And we can cook them up in the fire. That right there is what you want. You can boil them, or you can chuck them in the coals, and once they crack, they're ready, and you can eat the inside of them. Yeah. Some really nice bunion nuts. You can even get these off already. There we go. Yes. 
the waterfall is only about 10 minutes up that way so if I want any more I can come back later and if we come up here wow no way oh it's so good to be back and this is where we're going to be staying for the next 24 hours all right Look at that. I've just been swimming in the creek, chilling under that waterfall and everything for the past hour or so. But what I need to do now is actually build a survival shelter that I'm gonna sleep in tonight. So let's start collecting some more materials, get this shelter build going, and maybe we can even go catch a fish later that we can cook up along with that bunion up. some of this stuff. We have this up here. Just lash it all together with these vines that I found. Get some firewood for tonight. All right, and after hours of building, take a look at the end result that we got right here. That's actually awesome. Got a little thatch top roof there, bit of bedding down here. I've done a bit of rock decorations. I'm gonna set the fire up just where these bunion nuts are and hopefully we'll be able to cook up not only these guys, but maybe a fish too. I'd like to get a little spangled perch or something. We'll go for a fish up under the waterfall in a second. So almost a year ago today, I actually came up to this same spot and did an overnight survival video. But that time I actually bought a hammock up, slept in a hammock underneath the stars. So it's gonna be a bit different sleeping in an actual shelter, but there's nothing more grounding and nothing that connects you to nature more than literally going out with bare minimal materials out into the wild, catching your own food, building your own shelter to sleep in and staying out here and just experiencing it all. But yeah, it's a bit sad that I won't be living on this creek system anymore. Of course, I'll come back down to it and everything, but I'll never be able to actually walk from my house to a place like this and do one of these videos again. But just this creek in particular is very special to me because I grew up on it. I went to school on a place on this creek system. I filmed my first video here and I'm sure a lot of you guys would have watched me grow up living on this creek system and filming videos here. So thank you all so much for sticking around to this point. These are all legends and I appreciate you all.
make a little path in there. Chuck these in. And there we go. There's no creek rocks in here. Why? Why does this always happen? This is a big creek rock. <laughs> And there's my dinner. Now the owners of this land, the Jinnabara and Gubby Gubby people, I remember when I was little, every couple years they used to have a ceremony down at the local dam where they'd cook up a bunch of bunion nuts. And I've never actually eaten one before, so this is gonna be my first time trying one. So you crack back the shell, and then inside is that, and you can eat all of that. It's got the consistency of a potato and it kind of tastes like a macadamia nut. It's really good, like way better than any of my catching cooks that I've ever done. So it's about five o'clock at the moment. The sun's about to set and when it does, I'm gonna get that fire roaring, get my torch out and go for a night walk up the creek, see if we can find any animals. It's been such a cool day. I'm keen to see what this night has to offer. And yeah, back to sleeping in the shelter. Right, and would you take a look at this beautiful fella right down in front of us right here. So this is the Bandy Bandy, also known as the Hoop Snake, and I'm so stoked that I can actually find one because the funny fact about this guy is not only are these one of my favorite snakes, but I actually designed my Miller Wilson merch after them. That stuff that's on my website, that snake logo, is one of these Bandy Bandies, which is so cool. Now there are six species of Bandy Bandies that live here in Australia. This one's just found on the east coast and recently in 2018, there was actually another species discovered up in the Cape up north. Why I feel so blessed about finding this snake is these guys spend 90% of their life underground and they only feed on blind snakes, which also only feed on ant larvae, which really gets you thinking if one of those species was to have a decline in population, it would affect a whole bunch of other species. Now, it's actually starting to rain a bit at the moment, which is why we found this guy. They normally come up out of the ground on rainy nights. You might see them on the road and stuff, but I just think these guys are the coolest snake. Now, they are venomous, but they're definitely not venomous enough to affect a human. They're very reluctant to bite and everything. Oh, you're amazing. Look at that. <laughs> wow. What a beautiful species of snake this is. All right, he's going for a bit of a crawl. Let's follow him and I'll teach you a bit more about him. Oh, that is so cool. Hey bud. Where are you going? Off to hunt some blind snakes. This is a nice size one as well. All right, let's go. So this is the reason right here why they're called a hoop snake. They'll put themselves up into these massive hoops to hopefully scare away predators, and maybe he's a bit clumsy. If the predator really was going to attack this snake, maybe it would hit a part of the body that's not as important as the head. So that's the reason why they put this little hoop up, just like that. As you can see, he's moving and he's still got it up, which is pretty cool. That's so awesome. I kind of want to see him dig back into the ground. I've always wanted to film that. So, fingers crossed, let's keep following him and see where he goes. I 
I've been walking around for a while and I've only found that bandy bandy. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm back at camp at the moment. I'm going to hop in there, fall to sleep for the night. That's been really cool so far. What a day. I'll see you all tomorrow. It's 3.45 in the morning at the moment. Absolutely started pouring down rain. Not a chance I'm getting back to sleep. Everything's pretty soaking wet. So I think the sun's gonna come up in maybe about an hour or so. So I'm just gonna have to wait it out until then. Get up early and head back home. It can't be perfect all the time, but I'm still enjoying it. Something a bit different. I'm really lucky that I built this thatch on top of that, but yeah. Oh, everything's getting soaked, including me. All right. I'll see you guys in an hour or so. So it's currently about 5.30 in the morning at the moment. So what happened was I went to bed at about eight, woke up at three o'clock and I was like, oh, this is mint, I had the best sleep. Literally was so tired after a big day. And then all of a sudden at 3.30, it started pouring down rain. And although I wasn't getting wet at first, eventually like after a couple of hours of rain, I just ended up, I'm literally soaked right now. So what I thought I'd do, get up early, start heading back up the creek. Since last night, the creek's already risen about a foot, so it's gonna make it way harder to actually get back to where I'm going. But what I thought I'd do is I'd start heading back now because if a flash flood was to happen, I'm not sure what's going on upstream. So it might push a heap of water down and then I'll get trapped up here for another night or so. By the time we get back there, it would have been 24 hours as well. So I'm gonna start packing up my stuff, head back up the creek, and yeah, maybe we'll find another cool animal on the way home. sitting on the tree over here this is called an elkhorn and I've been seeing a heap of them up the creek and what I didn't realize that I found really cool was the reason why they're shaped like this and the reason why some other plants in this area are actually shaped like a kind of basket is because what they're trying to do with that shape is actually catch leaves so even these guys up here sitting along this log you'll notice that inside there's a bunch of leaf litter and that's what these plants are actually feeding on which is pretty cool oh yeah Raining down again, we've still got a massive walk ahead of us. Let's keep going. Feels good to see the sun. I feel like a little seal. Nothing on me or nothing inside my bag is dry. <laughs> Just a little bit of breakfast. These are called Matt Rush or Lamandra. And you can see them all along the banks of these creek systems. They're literally everywhere. Tastes very planty, which is weird.
coming down to the home stretch right now and I would have already survived 24 hours out here in the Australian rainforest. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for coming along for this adventure. This is the last time I'll be able to walk from my house, so it's been a really special one. I'm glad I could bring all of you along for it as well. The road's about 50 meters that way, so I'm gonna walk back home, start editing up this video, and I got a new video coming this weekend. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you leave a like, subscribe down below. And yeah, thank you to all the existing legends that have been there from the beginning. I got plenty more videos to come. This year's gonna be a big one, so I hope you can join in for some of the adventures. But yeah. Let's start walking back home and I'll see you again next Saturday in the next adventure.